Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of Brave Kids Art Club. My name is Brad and I can't believe it's already Friday. This week has just flown by and hopefully this weekend you guys have some really fun plans. But today's illustration is going to be so much fun so I'm excited that you guys are here because today we're doing a drawing to celebrate back to school. And I know school is going to look a lot different for a lot of you this year. So I just want to say how proud I am of you guys and if there's anybody I know who can handle this change, it's you guys. So we'll just have to look for all the positives in this situation. My daughter is a great example. I'm so proud of her. She's been so excited to go to kindergarten and try out school for the very first time. And she was a little bummed to hear that she's not gonna be able to go in person. She's gonna have to do it online. But she handled it like a champ and she's looking for all the positives and I'm really proud of her. And I know a lot of you guys are in the same boat. I know you guys can do this. All right, so what better symbolizes education than an apple? To be more specific, we're gonna draw a teacher's apple with a little worm sticking out of it. But I'll explain why as soon as we get all of our tools ready and uh, so we can get started. All right, so let's start sketching our apple with a little worm friend in there. I'm sure the teacher would not mind that there's a cute, adorable little worm in there, right? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they would. Okay, so let's start with trying to figure out where this is going to live on here. Make sure we get everything at the right size. So we're not going to draw the exact shape of things. We're going to draw kind of geometric basic shapes, and then we'll, then we'll make them exactly how we want them after we figure that part out. So we're going to draw our apple. I'm going to start with just a circle, and of course apples aren't perfect circles. So we're going to change that. But let's kind of start by getting the, the rough size of our apple. So. I'm just gonna kind of just kind of mess around and draw some lines here. There we go. This is how I draw circles. <laughs> Doesn't have to be perfect. There's little lines and stuff all over the place, but I'm gonna pick more of the outside line of this, I think, to be kind of my guide. Now this is a guide. So I left it a little bit to the left as well because I want to put my worm over here. And then up here I left some room because I want to add my leaf. But let's figure out first where the middle is, because this is where the stem's gonna come out of the apple. So let's kind of draw a little stem right there. There we go. And we know we have room for the, the leaf and the worm over here. So let's get make sure we get the shape of the apple right first and then we'll add the other stuff on it. Does that sound good? Awesome, okay. So let's go ahead and, you know, apples, the one I'm gonna draw at least, not all of them look alike, but I did notice that apples kind of have a heart shape to them. It's like a heart with the bottom just kind of creased in. So. I'm gonna start by kind of going at this point right here almost, just maybe a little bit above it. And I'm gonna go like this. And I kind of go out. I'm gonna come in a little bit. It starts to come in. So let's see how this is kind of a heart shape. That's gonna come in. And we're gonna have to make this symmetrical, which makes it tricky. But we can do it. We can do it. All right. And we're gonna bring it back in over here. And we'll round this off right here in the middle, kind of like that. And then we'll do the exact same thing on the other side. Do you see that or is it kind of messy? And if you want a wider apple, you can make it wider. So let's do the other side here, let's copy it. We're gonna go right over here, curve it, like we're drawing a heart. But instead of coming right here to the point, we're gonna come a little bit wider. See if this continued on, it'd be a little heart. But you just kind of cut out a little dent in it for the bottom of your apple. That's how I draw apples. And sometimes if it really does help, you can draw a couple circles right next to each other, like that, and a few more, and a couple more down here, and then you just kind of connect them. That's another way to do it. And then you can have a little line there to kind of see where it's at. But uh, I think you got it this time. And if you did need that guide, go ahead and, and use that and make your other circles. I'm gonna erase those because we pretty much have our shape now. There we go. Now we can kind of make it look a little nicer. There we go. I like how that looks. See, doesn't it look like an apple? I think so, at least. <laughs> Maybe yours looks more like an apple that you've seen. I know there's different types of apples. Okay, maybe this is like a red delicious. They kind of come in this shape. All right, so now that we got that, let's draw a little line or a little curve right here. It's gonna be the little dent where the, uh, the hole where the stem goes in. So we'll go like that, and let's make our stem a little thicker. How about that? We're gonna go like that, maybe go on both sides of it a little bit. And at the end, we'll kind of draw a, an oval that got a little messy. So I'll clean that up. So we'll kind of just go straight down there, like that. 
So now we got to add the little leaf on there. Now you can do it a couple different ways. You can do it kind of wavy the way I want to do it, or you can just do a, uh, a football shape like that. That would be a really simple way to do it, and you could just do it right there on the side or up top here, wherever you want to put it. Uh, they come in all different, they go in kind of all different spots. They grow different spots. So you don't have to, there's not a real right way to do it, but I want to kind of have my leaf overlap my apple just because I think it'd be a little more interesting instead of having it off by itself. So what I might do is just go up here, and I'm going to do like this weird funky S, S kind of shape and bring it right there. See how it's kind of a really weird S? <laughs> now again, there's not a right way to do it, so don't feel obligated to kind of stick with exactly how I'm doing it. But that's just another like long S shape, and then it connects to that. Looks pretty cool, huh? Now we'll just erase that as we go. Just, just be erasing. I want to use this eraser. Just be erasing as you go so that you can kind of clean it up and see how everything's going to look. But there you have an apple. It's looking pretty cool. I think what I'm going to do is just do a little, I'm going to do another one right in here, a little S there, because I want to make some lines like this. And I kind of randomize my lines like that. I don't put them all in the same spot or equidistant. That means they're the same distance away from each other. I like to mix and match it a little bit. See that? It's a little bit different. We'll do another one right here. There we go. It makes it a little more interesting. I like that. That looks pretty cool. Okay, now we got to add our worm friend. Let's do a little hole, maybe right over here. So we'll just draw a little circle right about here. We're going to have this little worm making a little house inside this, inside this apple. <laughs> and then luckily for us, worms are very, very easy to draw. They're just little squigglies. So we'll start off by... Maybe we'll do it up here. Let's kind of go up. Now again, you guys, this doesn't have to be how I'm drawing it. If you want your worm wrapping around here, you want its tail popping out, you want to give this worm glasses or a hat or whatever you want to do, go ahead and do that. Use your own, use your own imagination and uh, just have fun with it. I want you guys to just follow along if you want to and if you want to change things, please change things. You're always you're the artist, and this is yours, so make it your own. All right, so now I'm going to go around like that. Maybe I'll make it a little bit thicker right up here. There we go. A little bit smaller over there. Making little, little touches here and there. Let's erase the inside so that it looks like it's in front. Now this is kind of a new concept we've we've not really touched on before, but we're making it look like it's coming out of the apple. And so the one way we can do that, so you just cut it off over here. You see how it's going over this side and not on this one? So it looks like it's coming out of there. But you can also do this, do a little line, kind of follow the same curve of the outside, just do it on the inside a little bit further in. And this part is going to be dark. And so you can kind of see the thickness of the apple on the inside. You can see that the ha apple is hollow. It's kind of a cool little trick to make it look three-dimensional, like it's coming out. All right. I like that a lot. That'll be really fun. Okay, now let's draw some eyeballs. Hey, we're back to drawing, not animals, but insects. <laughs> you can consider these little worms insects, and we're kind of going back to what we did before. But see, we're drawing other things, too. We're drawing apples with them. So we'll draw those big eyes that we're used to with the big pupil inside. There we go. Big happy pupils that makes this the black part in the middle makes them seem friendly. I'm going to draw a line right over here. And I'm going to go a little U shape right underneath it. So we're going to make this smiling so it's not going to scare our teachers. I'm going to draw a little line for a tongue, a little curve for a tongue on the edge. And maybe let's give them some cute little teeth. This will make them look younger. <laughs> like it's a young little, little eager, little worm that's eager to learn. Maybe that's why it snuck into the apple in the first place. Here, we'll draw some little lines right here for the bodies that, you know, the, 
the worm is kind of segmented in the middle, so we'll do that. We'll draw some more lines, but uh, these are going to be the ones I'm probably going to do with the, the marker, so I want to make sure I cover that. But Awesome! Well, this is looking really, really fun. Hopefully you guys are having a good time and uh, yours is coming together. You can pause it at any point, but let's go ahead now, if you're ready, and start into our outlining with our dark marker or our pen. This will be the exciting part so that we can get it ready, basically making our coloring book for when we go to color. Should be a lot of fun. All right, let's start with this stem. So if you'll notice, today's video is lacking some facts. I didn't really have a lot of facts because I didn't know if I wanted to give you facts about apples because we'll probably draw apples at a different time too or something like that. <laughs> or do I give you facts about worms? But because it is, uh, as you know, it's the beginning of the school year for many of you, uh, I wanted to have something that was kind of symbolic of education or knowledge and it's kind of funny that an apple has become that symbol. Why do you think the apple is a symbol of knowledge? Well, I asked myself the same question and I asked, uh, asked around and tried to figure out why we use that symbol for knowledge. And what I've come up with is a few different answers. One, it could be biblical about uh, the Garden of Eden and having a tree. You know, let's say they had an apple on there, the tree of knowledge. And so that's maybe where that came from. It also, you know, it could have come from, oops, I went over that a little bit. Maybe it was because of Sir Isaac Newton and the story of him learning about gravity because an apple fell out of the tree on his head when he was sitting under it. <laughs> I don't know, maybe that was it. And maybe it was just because kids or students gave teachers apples. Maybe that was it. I think I found lots of other resources, but I would love to hear why you think apples have anything to do with knowledge. But regardless, I thought that would be kind of fun to, to go ahead and draw because I am excited for the school year, even though, you know, obviously I'm not going to school, but my kids are. And this is going to be a really interesting, interesting school year. And I know, like I said earlier, it's very, very different for a lot of you. Now, some of you may be homeschooled and uh, you're used to this, but a lot of you, including my own kids, rely on the public school system. And I have come to, I have come to really, really appreciate all the teachers out there who put so much time and energy into teaching their students. It did amazing things for me growing up, having all these amazing teachers that were eager to help me learn and for, and really went out of their way to help me learn. I felt like that was that was really awesome to have such cool teachers and I know they just don't get enough praise. They deserve a whole lot more praise, especially after this, this pandemic and realizing how much they really do and <laughs> because now it's put on me as a parent. I'm really appreciative of all those teachers out there. And just because learning is different doesn't mean it has to be a negative or bad thing. There's silver linings or there's positive things that we can pull from this experience and I hope you guys find those positive experiences. Maybe you get to spend more time with your your family or you get to learn about other things because you have more time and not in school, in person, in school um, all day. Now you get to focus on mixing in some other cool things. Like my son really wants to learn how to play the piano and he's been doing such a great job of putting in that time and effort. And he has the time because his other homework he can get done quicker because it's online. And uh, yeah, so I, I think there's some really cool things that you can do. So look for, look for those opportunities. I challenge you to look for ways to make this school year an awesome school year, even though it might be different, even though you might be sad you're not getting to see your teacher or your friends at school. Uh, I, know, I know you guys can handle it as hard as it may be. Alrighty, well, I think I'm finished with my outline and uh, I'm ready to go ahead and just erase all my, my pencil over here so that I can get right into coloring. So just go ahead and catch up with me here. If you need to pause it, like I said, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, uh, we'll catch up right after the uh, coloring. How about that? Perfect.
All righty, there it is. Oh, that one ended up being really fun. I hope you guys really enjoyed this one because I wasn't sure how it would turn out, but this has been so much fun. Our little worm friend coming out of there, some really cool bright colors, and it was just a whole lot of fun. Well, I'm really proud of how this turned out. So I'm gonna sign my name on it so everybody knows that this was my drawing. Put my little initials there, and hopefully you're proud of yours as well. Well, thank you guys so much for drawing with me. I know it's the end of the week and sometimes we're getting kind of antsy for the weekend. So have fun, be safe. And remember, we do this Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So subscribe to the channel. And if you really enjoyed this video, please drop it a like. Now at the end of this, it is Friday. So we are gonna share some of your work. You guys have done an amazing job of submitting your artwork and I really wanna share it with you guys. I wanna show it off. And so stick around to the very, very end and there's gonna be a little slideshow of some, maybe it's your work in there, so. Oh, and before I let you go, remember that this school year may be tough for you, but it's also really tough on your parents, it's tough on these teachers, it's kind of tough for everybody. So hopefully you are patient and understanding and really take advantage, like I said, take advantage of this year and make it something really special. So I'll leave you with be brave, be creative, but most importantly, be you. All right, we'll see you guys next time.